Well, boys and girls, Arkham is in a pretty bad spot these days, but I'd rather not focus on all that negativity. Instead, I'd like to talk about my favorite game in the Arkham series. I'm sure we all have one. Origins was once my favorite game in the series for five to six years. But recently, I played through the series again, and one game stuck out to me. I engaged with it far more than I did on previous playthroughs. It's a masterpiece from 2009, a game that I don't even have to mention, because one sound effect will bring back all sorts of memories. It's been years since I've played this game, but after replaying through it back in November, it has easily become my favorite game in the Arkham series. There are many reasons why, and I'd like to go over them with you. So with introductions out of the way, let's dive right in. When most Arkham fans think about Asylum's strengths, I'd like to believe most of them would think back on the atmosphere, because the atmosphere of Arkham Asylum is stellar, and Rocksteady couldn't recreate it, which speaks volumes to how well they did. Arkham is an unnaturally eerie location. It's an island isolated from the rest of Gotham. Furthermore, Arkham has tons of questionable design choices like most of Gotham. The only new things in the Asylum are security gates, electrical floors, and intercoms. Otherwise, most of the Asylum is made up of old architecture. Most buildings look run down, practically falling apart, and yet it remained a place for criminals to be kept. Speaking of those criminals, most are experimented on and treated with old equipment that looks like torture devices. This is not a place for rehabilitation, as much as Quincy Sharp would have you think. It's a place to punish the inmates. And as a player, you can feel all of this as you walk through the many locations in the asylum. The game makes you feel isolated and alone on an island where Joker is in complete control. His constant messages over the speakers, appearances on TV, and the cameras constantly following your every move add to this feeling of powerlessness. It doesn't help that most guards and NPCs can be found dead later in the game. The statue of Warden Sharp will stand untouched only for Joker to vandalize it. The guards in the greenhouse can be found killed by Zaz later on. These moments show that control of the island is lost. Everything builds on the atmosphere, and it's one of a kind. The world building in this game is also fantastic, but it's an aspect I ignored when I was younger. Most of the world building is done through collectibles, so we should talk about one very important person. It is I, Edward Nigma, the Riddler, and more importantly, your intellectual superior. My genius has allowed me to easily hack into your primitive communications. <laughs> My goal is simple. You complete a series of amusingly taxing challenges and, <laughs> well, you'll see. The one and only Edward E. Nigma, the man who will constantly taunt and belittle players as they complete his challenges. He is one of the most entertaining parts of the Arkham series, but he's also the most annoying. The Riddler challenges in Asylum are the easiest in the franchise. They are sometimes tedious, but they're nothing like the challenges in the other games. Anyone who has played Arkham Knight or hell, Arkham City, knows what I'm talking about. In Arkham Asylum, there are three different Riddler challenge types. There are his Riddler trophies, riddles, and alignments puzzles. Hidden throughout the map are the Riddler trophies. Well, calling them hidden is being generous because most of these motherfuckers are in plain sight. Eddie, the fact that you consider yourself such a genius is embarrassing, especially since you hide most of your trophies as if you were a five-year-old. Most of these things can be found in plain sight, hidden under bushes, on top of watchtowers, or in the vents. His riddles, however, are significantly harder to solve because they require some intelligence, which I can be lacking in at most times. These riddles consist of references to other characters from the Batman comics. They add a lot to the world building because I learned of villains and stories I've never heard of. I mean, who the hell has heard of Ratcatcher? 
the Great White Shark, and Prometheus. It's additions like these that further immersed me in the world and got me interested in comic book characters I would have never heard about had I not played this game. Lastly, we have Riddler's alignment puzzles. These damn things constantly mess with my head. To solve them, you must use detective vision and then align two pieces of a question mark. The hard part is finding those damn pieces. I have wasted so much time looking for the solution only to feel stupid by its end. Either that, or I cheat. Are you cheating? Looking them up on the internet? Tell me. Oh shit, he's on to me. Now it's time to talk about the other collectibles, those being the tapes and the Chronicles of Arkham. They are similar to each other since both provide audio recordings that add context to what's going on before the events of the game take place. The tapes can be found throughout the map. Once found, they will play an interview with one of the main villains from the game. These tapes are fantastic, further immersing the player into the world that Rocksteady has crafted. Then we have the Chronicles of Arkham, aka the worst kept secret in the asylum. These things are meant to be hidden, but most of them are behind obvious destructible walls. Nonetheless, they tell the story of Amadeus Arkham who originally founded the asylum. I won't spoil anything, but in short, he goes insane and ends up as a patient in his asylum. What I find funny is during my first playthrough, everything that goes on at the asylum, and its creepy aesthetic as a whole, led me to not question the fact that a GHOST a fucking ghost was telling me his life story. I wasn't phased at all, I just accepted it as if it was normal. Newsflash, there is a twist, but I want anyone who hasn't played the game to find them and hear it for themselves. Something about the maps in Arkham Asylum hit differently. I genuinely think a lot of locations in this game are my favorite to play through, especially the Predator sections. I don't know how to explain it, but the maps in Asylum feel drastically different from the other games. My favorite Predator section is either Intensive Treatment or The Sewer. Intensive Treatment gives me tons of nostalgia, and The Sewer is an incredibly small map packed with tons of armed thugs. I like the challenge in The Sewer, and it always feels like an accomplishment when I manage to clear it. My least favorite Predator map, however, has got to be the Greenhouse. It's a fairly meh map. Not bad, but it's not great either. There are vents, ledges, and gargoyles, but there are no destructible walls or windows to add more takedown potential. Something this game did differently from the future games was add Predator sections where you'd have to sneak past all of the armed guards. If a single one of them figures out that Batman is there, they'd kill a hostage and the player would fail. I don't know the fan base's general feelings towards these sections, but I like them. Forcing the player into a section where they must sneak around guards rather than take them down is intense. There are only two in the game, and only one of them includes the suicide callers. These callers get introduced partway into the game, and if a thug is taken down, then Joker will hop on the intercom to let his crew know what happened. Batman's taking out one of your crew! Did you even notice? In this encounter, that means Batman can't take anybody down. Otherwise, the other criminals will be alerted to their fallen comrade and kill the hostages. I was also shocked by the level of detail found in these Predator sections. It's been a few years, maybe like half a decade or more since my last playthrough, so I wasn't ready to see thugs shitting themselves as they start dropping one by one. It seemed like I had forgotten how good of a foundation Asylum was. In Predator sections, enemies will start off feeling relaxed and in control, but once they catch wind of Batman's presence, they will start searching the room for him. Some thugs will buddy up watching each other's backs. Once enough of them get taken down, the remaining few will reach a terrified state. At this point, they become emotional wrecks that frantically search the room. They begin denying orders, stop buddying up, shoot at random equipment out of fear, Stupid boiler, there's the crap out of it. and constantly check all angles. The fucking audio bugged. Ah, oh, make it stop. What the fuck do I do? Fucking bitch, come here. Oh hey, I fixed it. It's funny because Joker is usually on the intercom shit talking his crew, but once one guy is left, he singles him out and begins making fun of him. Joker is honestly such a shit boss. He constantly fucks over his guys for a laugh, dishes out harsh punishments, and makes situations even worse by making fun of them. Imagine being in this guy's shoes. Batman has silently taken out all of your crew and you somehow haven't seen him. Then everybody's favorite boss hops on the intercom to let you know you're the last one and that Batman should do his worst. Hey, Bats, go easy on him. For me. Oh, hell, what do I care? Do your worst! <laughs>
Like, what the fuck, man? I will say now that Joker is freaking hilarious in this game, and I will always stop in my tracks to hear what he has to say. Tell me, Bats, what are you really scared of? Failing to save the cesspool of a city? Not finding the commissioner in time? Me? In a thong? <laughs> Suffice it to say, I love the Predator sections in this game and prefer them over the rest of the series for personal reasons. So we're a good chunk into the video, and now is the time we finally talk about the story. The story is tightly knit and well written throughout. I honestly prefer the story in Asylum rather than City, and that most likely comes down to nostalgia and preference. It feels like it's right out of a comic book, and that feeling persists through the entire game. It even becomes a part of the game's identity. A lot of the artwork in this game has a comic look to it, and if you pause the game, a filter is put over the background. It's little details like this that make this game my favorite in the franchise. Anyways, I I liked the approach to the world design in Arkham Asylum. The other Arkham games take on a more open world approach, which means more Riddler, more side quests, and more space to explore. While I enjoy that approach, the fact that this game's play area is much smaller makes it stand out. The only side content is the collectibles, so a majority of a player's playthrough is spent playing through the story. Additionally, a lot of Arkham feels claustrophobic. This game seems like it has the smallest rooms in the series, and I like how that translated over to combat. I've already talked about the Predator sections, but the combat encounters also have some tight spaces. The visitor center, sewer, and holding cells come to mind. Also, whoever put that fucking titan fight in the sewer is a sadistic ass bastard. But getting back to the story, hot damn is it good. I'm not going to summarize the story since that's not the point of the video, but in short, Batman has apprehended the Joker yet again and takes him to Arkham Asylum. He of course breaks out and takes over the rest of the asylum. From there, the story opens up with a genuine mystery as to why Joker takes over. Then, once the reason is revealed, Batman must do everything he can to stop him while dealing with any challenges that come his way. Now is a good time to talk about how well they did with the opening of the game. A brief cutscene plays as Batman drives through the streets of Gotham on his way to the asylum. Once he arrives, the cutscene ends and we're escorting Joker back to his cell. The entire section is unskippable, and in most games, I hate that approach. But in Arkham Asylum, I always find myself enjoying this part of the game. It's filled with so much character and life that it manages to entertain me even after repeat playthroughs. One reason as to why is the voice acting. The voice cast in this game is fantastic, and it's insane that they got both Mark Hamill and Kevin Conroy to reprise their roles from the animated series. Listening to Joker on his way to his cell is genuinely hilarious and entertaining. Just gotta check your prisoner, Officer Bowles. Whatever, just be quick! Only following procedure. Well, the patient seems to be in satisfactory condition. Looks like he suffered minor lacerations, probably in the last two hours. There seems to be... <laughs> Mean to take my temperature? I'd be happy to drop my pants. He saw you. Get him out of here. This entire part of the game is a joy to play through, and it's such a great way to start the game. Now I want to talk about the boss fights, or encounters, with the main villains of the game. I won't say much since many people before me have already talked about these sections in depth and have done a much better job than I ever could, so I highly recommend watching some retrospectives on Arkham Asylum or the series as a whole, because man are those videos fantastic! I might have some on screen and you can find them linked in the description below. Overall, most of the boss fights are meh. Some encounters are fantastic, but the actual boss fights kind of suck. Let's start with Scarecrow, the man that made this game infinitely more creepy than it needed to be. Our local gas enjoyer puts Batman at a disadvantage, throwing him into fear toxin induced sections. The encounters themselves are easy to beat since you just have to avoid Scarecrow's gaze. The interesting part of his encounters is the events that take place leading up to them. I won't spoil much, but that damn third encounter. I wish I could remember how I reacted to it back on my first playthrough, because I've heard horror stories of people dropping the game for years or thinking that their console was broken. It's insane that Rocksteady got permission to add that to the game, but hey, it made players genuinely afraid, so good job Scarecrow, you fucked with a lot of people back in the day. Next up is everybody's favorite disappointment, Bane. Surprisingly, Bane's fight is kind of fun and challenging in a way. 
Although the big man himself acts like a titan, so he's not that interesting. It honestly just makes me want to play Origins again. <laughs> Harley's encounter is enjoyable since you have to deal with waves of enemies while avoiding the electrical floor. It's a neat little distraction from the normal combat, which keeps things entertaining. I also like the running gag of Harley getting taken down with ease throughout the series. Now we move on to arguably the most iconic section in the game, Killer Croc's Lair. Croc's section is amazing since Batman is put into a situation where Croc hunts him down. I'm not beating the masochist allegations because this is one of my favorite sections in the game, and I just got done talking about how much I like the TN1 fight. What I like most about this section is that encounters with Croc are unavoidable. When I first played through the game, I thought if I stayed as silent as possible, he wouldn't appear. I'm glad that isn't the case, because while the encounter would be tense, it would also be lame as hell. The developers likely knew this, so they have Croc jump out of the water now and then to spook ya. When he does this, the music picks up and it's genuinely intense on a first playthrough. Sure, all you need to do is hit him with a batarang, but sometimes he appears behind walls or around a corner, so you have to wait for him to close in before knocking him down. There are also moments where he starts breaking platforms underneath you, which forces players to use the line launcher to cross the gaps. This is a very tense encounter that most likely made me shit myself when I first played it all those years ago. Poison Ivy, otherwise known as the Vore Enthusiast, is up next. Her boss fight, while it looks cool, is pretty meh. I'm not the biggest fan of it. Might just mean I suck at the fight, which in most cases I do. But I feel that it drags on for way too long. Two health bars were unnecessary, and I usually get sick of the fight halfway through the second health bar. Also, is Ivy dumb? Why does she come out of safety to taunt you? I get the developers needed a way for players to damage her, but it makes no sense and it makes her seem stupid. And finally, one of the most critiqued parts of the game, the Joker fight. It may surprise you that I'm indifferent to it. I feel it could have been infinitely better, but it's filled with a lot of character that keeps me from disliking it. I still think Joker getting distracted by the news helicopter is charming. All eyes are on him and he's loving it. I also love the end of the fight where Batman sprays explosive gel on his knuckle and knocks Joker out. Like, am I crazy for thinking this is one of the coolest fucking sequences in a video game? Overall, the encounters with villains are fun, but the boss fights leave something to be desired. There are tons of smaller encounters with some of the villains, but I wanted to cover the major ones. Good night, Ms. Young. <laughs> now that was unexpected. Who'd have figured a deranged murderer would kill the poor little doctor? <laughs> Let's start off with the things that I like about this game, because they easily outweigh all the things that I dislike. The Visitor Center, for example, is a fantastic location in which you get some one-on-one -on -one time with Mr. J. At certain points in the story, players can head here and Joker will have something to talk about. The location is creepy as hell, and it doesn't help the fact that Joker will change his pose if players turn their back on him. Overall, it's a creepy location that I never thought to check on my first few playthroughs. This is a fairly small part of the game, but a Blackgate thug known as Razor pops up in the game two times. The first is in a room filled with Joker toxin. His crew abandoned him since he was taking too long to leave. So after Batman drops him into the gas below, he somehow survives and we can find him placing bombs on gargoyles in intensive treatment. He just about gets it set before BOSS OF THE YEAR comes right through to test the bomb on him. Good. Let's test him out. No! No, I'm still up here! Ah! It's such a small detail in the game, but it's funny to see this one Black 8 thug get fucked over twice by his boss. While looking for Riddler trophies or playing through the story, Joker will pop on the intercom to trash talk Batman, tell jokes, or give orders. Most of them are scripted events, but there's a handful of them that Joker will cycle through. Joker here! Let me remind all new residents of Joker Asylum that they are expected to follow one simple rule. Punishment for not following this rule is death. No ifs, ands, or buts. You know what the best thing is about the rule? It's a secret! <laughs> Eventually, Warden Sharp is forced to say stupid things over the intercom at the request of Harley and Joker. Oh, let me go, you crazy bitch! Mmm, Sharpie used a bad word. Mama Spank! Oh, ah, this is the Warden! It is vital that everyone unload their side arms immediately. Yeah, I recommend unloading them into... I can't read this. Yeah, unloading them into your head! I love the intercoms because they add to the immersion and they allow me to hear more Mark Hamill, which is always a plus. 
And lest we forget this damn tune is very nostalgic and will flood my brain with memories the second I hear it. So while editing this video, I came up with a few more things that I like about the game, so we're just gonna dive right in and talk about those before I get to my dislikes. Towards the beginning of the game, a ringing phone can be heard near the holding cells. I never thought to get a closer look until recently. If you go near the phone, you'll hear a conversation between the caller and Joker. I was surprised by the scenario at first, since it's easy to miss and I've never interacted with it until now. Hello? What's happening there? I'm trying to contact Steve. Is he there? Hold one second. I'll see if I can find him. <sighs> Thank you. I'm sorry. I've looked everywhere, but I can only find his head. I'll get back to you when I find the rest of them. <laughs> The soundtrack in Arkham Asylum is spectacular, and I think it's my favorite out of the entire series. Arkham Origins originally had my favorite soundtrack, but the ambient tracks in this game, especially the one you hear now, always hit right. They add a lot to the overall atmosphere, and once shit hits the fan, the combat tracks make me feel like the biggest badass in the room. Alright, you remember the beginning of the game? You remember when Joker's making his grand escape and he kicks this doctor? Well, did you know that he actually fucking dies? <laughs> yeah, that's right. The doctor is fucking dead. All Joker did was kick him, mind you, and then run off to take over the rest of the asylum. And yet, some way, somehow, the doctor died from that singular kick. This small detail had me dying for a good five minutes because it's just so fucking stupid. I never knew about this until I watched a retrospective, but apparently there's a secret room hidden in the warden's office. It needs all of Batman's explosive gel to break through, and the placement of explosives takes a few tries. But once inside, there are plans for a project named Arkham City. Which, for anyone unaware, is the sequel to this game, which means Rocksteady had plans for a sequel in place when they were making this game. So with hindsight, it's so freaking cool to see that Rocksteady's plans had actually gone through. Especially since Arkham City turned out to be a really great game, and is a lot of people's favorite game in the Arkham franchise. Alright, I don't know if this is a controversial take, but I'm not a fan of the sections in the game where you're stuck in the catacombs. The game takes away your ability to grapple, so you have to use platforming to progress. However, I was never really a fan because it slows down the pacing of the game, and honestly feels pointless. If it wasn't for the dialogue in these sections, I would flat out hate them. But hearing about Joker's weird emails and overhearing his experiments with Titan make up for it. I've hacked into her email accounts. Two mail stand out. The first is a resignation letter dated last week. Sounds like she was trying to get away. And the second? A message from Joker. Well, Jack White. It's a long thread. Uh, she's begging to stop the experiment, says it's too dangerous. He's not listening. Let's see. Random threats to her family, a couple of bad jokes, a picture of a dead baby, and a threat. Go on. He says, I'm coming for you, I want what I paid for, and then another joke about wheelchairs. Lovely. My only other complaint is about the Titans. These monstrosities can hit Batman during moments where he should have invincibility frames. I could be mid-takedown, but because the Titan decides to rush me, I somehow take damage. It always feels like bullshit, because I'm punished for doing well. It's not like I'm making a mistake, instead, I'm hit for doing well in combat. I do have one more minor complaint, and that's towards the remote Batarang. In this game, it controls like ass. It is so slow, and there's no additional buttons or controls to make the experience a little better. It's no wonder why they improved it later on in the series, because here, it's freaking useless. I don't think I've used the remote Batarang once. So these three issues are the only ones that I have with the game. It's a masterpiece just like the rest of the Arkham series. Well, except you. We, we, we don't talk about you. The game started it all and could very well remain my favorite Arkham game. Origins held that title for a while, but after engaging with this game more, I think Arkham Asylum has taken the crown. As I stated earlier, everyone has their favorite game in the Arkham series. A lot of people in the last Arkham video said Origins was their favorite, so feel free to comment below what your favorite Arkham game is. I honestly feel like there is no wrong answers because each game does something exceptionally well. Well, except for you, you're just exceptionally shit. So that said, thanks for watching and I'll see you next time. <laughs>